Hey, my name is Matt, and you probably saw the post I had where I converted day to night, and that's why you're checking out this video. I'll walk you through a few of the steps. The reality is, it takes some time. It is not a plug and play. It's a little bit like learning a rendering engine. And then you can decide for yourself if you think the lore is something that could help you in your workflow. We're going to use Forge, which is an alternative to Automatic 11.11, a stability web UI. And I like to install my AI apps with Stability Matrix. And I have a video on that if you're new. But if you're not, even if you're an expert, check it out, install it. It's really easy. It's great for sharing models and output and to keep things updated. So we're going to run Forge here in Chrome. And I have a checkpoint model that's from Civit AI called Zavi Chroma. So you can download any of your favorite and try any models. The idea here is that I'm using a LoRa to help convert this image. And the LoRa has two features. It will convert the image using a low to noise. So that maintains the original image a little bit. And then it also later on at high resolutions contains so much data that otherwise is not available in the checkpoint. And so when we add the LoRa in, you'll see the difference right away. So we have a simple control net depth to maintain some of the geometry. And you can copy these settings here. And this is just a basic image to image setup. And so when I run this, the prompts are asking it to basically turn this image into something at night. You'll see that there is very little change, of course, because we have a low to noise. A higher to noise will start doing some alterations to this image to make it more night. However, it will start to distort the geometry. Make sure you check your terms and conditions with any image that you use. This is for artistic and educational purposes only. We're going to add the LoRa. Goes into your LoRa directory on your model in Stability Matrix. And we're going to lower the strength from and the weight from 1 to 0.65. We change the value of the LoRa depending on the denoising. So you can see here the LoRa has automatically started to add some of the lights from our prompts, right? It's done a really good job with this building here and it's maintained some of the gherkin shape and we have some building lights turned on. Now it still looks pretty terrible, but that's because the image is really low res and it won't really do anything until we get up to a higher resolution, but we wanted to just get a baseline uh, condition that we can reference and start getting some of those settings. So I might increase the denoising if we want it to be later at night, and I'll do 0.42. I'll just also mention that this is all available on my website, Hallett-AI. I'm an ArchViz artist, and I've been experimenting with Stable Diffusion for almost two years now, and I love it. I made it part of my workflow. I have lessons. I started doing that. Saw a need for some imagery that was missing in any checkpoint I could find, and the best way to do that was for me to train a LoRa and instead of making my own checkpoint because I can train it locally on a 40, 4090. You can see that, yeah, that was a good denoise. And what we want to do initially, see how it still had that shadow? I would do it a little prep in Photoshop where we would uh, dodge out that, that hard shadow. That'll make it a little easier to convert later. And now the next thing to do is install the script ultimate upscale. And this will help us work in sections it's like a V-Ray rendering with the buckets. So we go our, to our tile width right here and Stable Diffusion XL is 1024 native. So we wanna use that as our bucket and they call it tiles. So then we want to tell it to upscale and we're gonna do two times. It'll go through in sections as you can see right here. Now that has a big advantage that the more an object takes up of our window, our bucket, the more fidelity and the more accuracy it'll maintain. It has a really hard time working on all of these subjects within one small low resolution image. But you can't convert the whole thing at once. You'll just have too much of this noticeable tiling. So we do it in an iterative state and that's the part that takes some time because we have to remove and constantly kind of reintroduce the previous layer anytime there's artifacts or mistakes in some of the geometry. So that's the time consuming process but the model is there to do a lot of the heavy lifting. This particular model contains 1600 images and it's trained at a high LoRa rank. So the model itself is one gigabyte and that allows us to get into some really fine detail with like things like that you wouldn't otherwise have in the checkpoint, like little umbrellas on a patio, uh, cars, 
uh, railroad tracks, which were a big thing that are missing. The idea is to go from a low res to high res in in a pat in certain passes, and so each pass will have its own settings that I'll share with you. You'll be able to drag and drop these into PNG info, and then the settings will populate automatically. And then I'm going to also send you a comfy workflow once that's ready. Give it a try yourself if you think this is interesting. It's a little bit finicky. It's like learning a rendering engine. It takes some time. You often with AI imagery have to generate 10 to get one that you like. So don't be discouraged when you don't get the results you want right away. And uh, good luck. Thanks for watching.